Hello, YouTube. I'm going to talk more about the Arctic. And if you like the subject matter and the phenomena I describe, you can look at my playlists about the Arctic Ocean and its secrets. Today, I want to let you know this. Scientists have discovered a place in the Arctic that generates 50-meter giant waves. A group of Russian scientists from the Marine Hydrophysical Institute, the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, the Institute of Oceanology and Moscow State University, have made a sensational discovery. <clears throat> Mega waves up to 50 meters high have been detected in the Russian part of the Arctic in the Kara Gate Strait. Earlier, waves with an average height of about 10 meters were recorded in the Arctic, while the new waves are five times bigger, higher, I should say. They were found near the Kara Gate Strait between the mainland and the Nova Zemlya archipelago. Scientists explain their formation by the interaction of underwater currents with an uneven seabed. Okay, <clears throat> they can explain it like that. There may be other explanations. Analysis of the field data during an 18-hour <clears throat> period from four stations there provided evidence that a complex sill in the car gates is the site of regular production of intense large applet amplitude nonlinear internal waves. Satellite data show a presence of a relatively warm north northeastward surface current from the Barents Sea towards the Kara Sea. <clears throat> the Kara Gate Strait, where mega waves were discovered, is strategically important for shipping. It connects the Barents and Kara Seas and is among the areas with the most intense maritime traffic in the Arctic Ocean. In light of the importance of the region in terms of navigation, 50-meter waves pose a serious threat to navigation. And, of course, the presence of the military there, too. I don't think they like it. The waves can lead to accidents, damage to ships, and even death of people. Let me tell you a little bit more. <clears throat> about the area. The Caragate Strait is 33 kilometers long and 50 kilometers wide. The depth ranges um, from the Perseus Shoal to the eastern part. And in, in, in this interval, the indicator varies from 7 to 130 meters. There's also a section along with a depth of more than 100 meters and a width just under 5 kilometers. The coast is high and rocky on all sides. The climate there in Arctic, <clears throat> the climate there is Arctic and harsh. Its special feature is a very, very long and cold winters. Strong winds and snowstorms are a frequent occurrence for a place like the Karagate. Wind gusts sometimes reach 50 meters a second. The <clears throat> water temperature is no higher than 13.5 Celsius, and the average mark is only about 0 0.9 Celsius. The strait is covered with ice for most of the time, but in some years, surprisingly, the surface can remain unfrozen for most of the winter. This happens under the influence of the Gulf Stream current, <clears throat> and I already told you about the Barents Sea in my previous videos. The Kara Sea is the marginal sea of the Arctic Ocean. Now, according to this data, the maximum depth is 620 meters. The Yenisei and the Ob rivers flow into it. This is the coldest sea in Russia, I was told. Ice, fog, storms. The northern sea route passes through the Kara Sea, <coughs> through the Kara <coughs> Gate Strait. The famous peninsula of the sea are the Taimir and Yamal, and interesting things happen there. Phenomena that most people in the West and other parts of the world know nothing about, but Taimir is a very interesting place. 25% or less has been explored. Wait till you see what has been found there. You, you look at my uh, playlist. Yamal, 
that's the area of the strange apertures and, and UFOs and much more. To the west is the Barents Sea. To the east is the Laptev Sea. The ports of the sea are Diksan and Sabeta, Dudinka and Egarka and the Yenisei, and a new port at the exit from the Ob River area. Nothing works normally in this sea. No compass, no gyroscope. And there's always, almost always ice. The large islands of the sea are by Gaich. I told you about that strange place. Nova Zimla, even more so. Franz Josef Land, Severna Zimla, Visa Island, and many others. There are huge deposits of gas and oil in that region. So you can imagine the interest worldwide to the sea. But let me tell you about something that lives there, that we know about. Oceanographers and marine biologists have jokingly called the Kara Sea fabulous. Here, at a depth of dozens of meters, there are creatures almost never seen by man, bizarre gorgons. An inexperienced scuba diver swims past the gorgon and may not pay attention to it. The simplest representatives of this species resemble starfish with thin rays. They prefer to freeze when they feel movement nearby. <clears throat> More complex creatures of the same species, Gorgona cephalus ecnumes, are distinguished by a large number of intricately woven tentacles. Scientists named the species Gorgon for its resemblance to a creature from ancient Greek myths. Gorgona cephalus has been studied quite poorly yet. Scientists are interested in the high level of adaptability of the Gorgons. These amazing creatures are able to live even in the icy waters of Antarctica. In the USSR, the authorities, in an atmosphere of the strictest secrecy, flooded, spent, and decommissioned nuclear reactor at the bottom of the sea. Years passed, the protective shells began to collapse under the influence of seawater, and the seawater began to become polluted. Now, not to sound like a bad Japanese sci-fi movie, you need to imagine what would happen if somehow this radiation affected the Gorgons. You can imagine how the creatures could grow in size. There are rumors, so we'll leave it at that. As far as UFOs and USOs are concerned, they're always attracted to the areas of contamination on our planet. I've shown it in my book, Russia's USO Secrets, co-authored with Phil Mantle, and in my other videos. It's a very interesting area in the Arctic. Due to the presence of the Russian military, of course, it's, it's this, this area is heavily militarized. And on the other side, are the other players in this complicated game. NATO, I think China is interested in the area as well. So there'll be a lot of attention to the sea. We just may not find out about all the discoveries. But we'll do our best. So if you like my research, please support me in the links you will find in this description to this video. Uh, please like my videos. Please kindly tell others about my work. And thank you for your attention to my work.